Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey you guys, I hope you guys are doing good today. So I want to come on here with another podcast for you guys. So I want to talk about the whole 6 9 situation. This is definitely going to be a Dragon Ball T episode, okay? It's so much going on right now with 6 9 I've been trying to cover um, this whole update with his case for the past week now, but it's like more and more information is coming out. So I'm going to probably do this in like two parts, and then there'll be more to come. So in this first part, I want to talk about the situation that happened last week with 6 9s former manager, Fino Shadi Jordan. If you guys remember my podcast from eight months ago, I talked about how Shadi was in court and he basically looked at 6 9 and in front of the whole courtroom, he stated that we don't bend, we don't fold, we're Treyway. And at that point, I'm like, that makes no sense. You're literally fighting for your life and you're in court talking about we don't bend, we don't fold, but you don't realize you're really in for the fight of your life. I want you guys to go ahead and check out this flashback and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary went into the courtroom yesterday his other co-defendants were there one of them being shoddy his former manager that he fired he was also there as well so they're basically saying that there's absolutely no love between takashi 69 and his former crew um they had him sitting apart from the other co-defendants um which makes sense because again if you guys have beef why would they have them sitting next to each other so they're saying like while the judge was talking and while the, the hearing was going on takashi was looking up at the sky he refused to make any eye contact with his old crew um, he wouldn't look at them at all. And so now the craziest part is during the hearing, um, Shadi basically tells the federal judge in the middle of the hearing, he says, we don't fold, we don't bend, we don't break, it's Treyway. They're saying that when that came out of his mouth, Takashi 6 9 just looked crazy. He looked sick to his stomach. His skin got really pale. I mean, which makes sense because they're all fighting for their freedom. And you're sitting here basically proudly announcing that you are in a gang. This is a gang. We don't fall. We don't bend. You're basically talking shit to somebody who holds your life, the rest of your life, in their hands. But I think that wasn't really a message for the judge. That was more so a message for Takashi because a lot of people are saying that Takashi, now that his back is against the wall, he's going to snitch he's going to tell and especially being that he got moved from general population into a more secured facility with neutral people who are not in gangs which is funny coming from a guy who proclaimed to be a blood and all this other stuff which people like me who have common sense knew that everything he was saying and doing was just for show he was not a real blood he was a fake gangster i've been called this out man, LA, man. Shit about this in the hood with them billy niggas and them hoover niggas you know what i'm saying you weren't up and we shooting niggas we ain't hooping niggas thought it was a game huh all right so you guys just saw that flashback of me talking about the situation so then after that what happened is that this past march um shoddy was basically recorded on a phone call by dj punch who was uh takashi 69 former dj and in that recording, Shadi was basically saying that Takashi 69 was an ungrateful rap bastard. He broke every street code out there. And in my personal opinion, I don't understand why the DJ would post this on the internet. He did try to quickly delete it. Delete all that shit! Delete all that shit! That play was so piggy! But that didn't matter. Once you post something online, people download it and it's a rap. So he posted this online. People got a chance to hear what Shadi felt about 6 9 and, and the whole case in general. And I really believe that not only um, all the things he was involved in, but also this recording kind of caused him to get the time that he got. So this nigga, uh, he, 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 he broke down every code and every rule out this motherfucker, bro. He's an ungrateful rat bastard, man. That's just that simple, man. But I forgive the little nigga. That's all. Like, you know what I mean? It's all good. Yeah, man. I get you, man. I lot of you, I think about everybody in there, you know what I mean? Everybody, my nigga, like, it ain't cool. You get what I'm saying? Like, a lot of niggas is, a lot of niggas is dragging you from it. A lot of niggas is standing with you still. You get what I mean? A lot of niggas don't know what's going on. You get what I'm saying? And that's another reason why I spoke up, because they got to have a balance of the narrative. Thank you. Yeah, that's a fact, boy. That's a fact. All right, so you guys just heard that recording. So if you all do not know, um, on September 8th, Shadi was sentenced to 15 years in prison, okay? This man, I believe he's 37 or 38 years old, which is a lot of damn time. So this entire situation is crazy. Once he was sentenced, he broke down crying, okay? So this is how real it got. 
Six nine has made a name for himself, creating controversy and speculation over his ties to one of New York's most notorious gangs, the Nine Trey Blood Gang, seen here in Six Nine's Gummo video. He has remained coy about his gang involvement, but earlier this year, his lawyer told Lisa Evers, "Using them as part of your security doesn't make you part of a gang." But it turns out it might. Today, it was revealed Takashi is a part of the Nine Trey gang and has actively worked to peddle heroin and attempted to kill rival members. His reasoning, quote, I did this to maintain or increase my own standing in Nine Trey. But the real significance is that he signed a cooperation agreement. So he has a plea which covers certain amount of, of jail time based on the federal sentencing guidelines, but his cooperation agreement allows the judge to sentence him to much below his standard guideline range, even no time whatsoever. So he's a cooperating witness now. Joe Takapina is not a part of Takashi's legal team, but he has represented everybody from Michael Jackson to Lilo Broncado and Jorn Vandersloot. According to the unsealed indictment, Takashi has entered guilty pleas to nine federal felonies, including racketeering, firearms charges, narcotics trafficking, and violent crimes in aid of racketeering. His involvement was kept quiet as prosecutors worked to round up other gang members. Now he's a cooperating witness. All facts that go against his tough guy gangster image. This will annihilate any sense of, of a tough guy image he had, any sense of a um, true gangster life image that he had. And, you know, I think it's going to affect his career to the point where he probably won't have one. At the age of 22, the rainbow haired rapper, whose real name is Daniel Hernandez, faces 47 years behind bars. Still, it's expected his cooperation will yield some leniency. His cooperation agreement allows the judge to sentence him to much below his standard guideline range, even no time whatsoever. So he's a cooperating witness now. You know, all these guys are really gangsta until they're facing real time. And one of the things that they're saying in the newspaper article is that they're saying that Jordan broke down in tears when he got his chance to speak during Friday's sentencing. He stated... I want to apologize to my close friends and my family, especially my sons, since I won't be there for them, he said before sobbing. After taking several minutes to compose himself, he continued, there's been a lot of violence I committed. I take full responsibility. I guarantee you, you won't ever see me in court again. I apologize to the victims of my crime. I apologize to their families. So this whole situation is just really insane and just goes to show you when keeping it real, you know what I'm saying, goes wrong. You know, Shadi could have really got on to do big things. You know, we saw him on Love and Hip Hop and, you know, 6 9 really helped to put him on as far as like, you know, making him more credible, making him more mainstream. You know, granted he had his gang ties and everything, but I mean, at some point he was running his own, you know, business. He was on Love and Hip Hop New York. He was trying to help Alexis Sky. So for him to go from all of that and getting legit money to now doing 15 years in prison because he couldn't leave that hood life alone it says a lot i don't really see where 6 9 owed him any loyalty especially when it came out that shoddy was fucking his baby's mother and that shoddy and the other guys in the gang were trying to you know extort him and you know supposedly he was behind the kidnapping of 6 9 so i think at that point 6 9 just felt like his back was against the wall so it's like you know these guys had no loyalty to me so i'm just gonna tell it all so this whole situation is crazy let's go ahead and get the discussion popping let me know what you guys think about this entire situation of um six nines ex-manager shoddy jordan being sentenced to 15 years and breaking down crying in court when just eight months ago he was really tough and saying we don't bend we don't fold we're treyway and now he's singing a whole different song now that he's facing that real time and i really hope that you know not just kids but you know grown adults learn from this because like i said he's grown but for some reason you know he was still heavily involved in that street life so much so that he bought takashi 69 into it when takashi 69 was not about that life whatsoever so the entire situation is just a shame Every everything that these men were involved in so go ahead and leave a comment let me know your thoughts on this entire situation don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you haven't already so stay tuned for part two all right deuces